everyone, so today I'm going to be doing my May favorites and I can just honestly say I don't have a whole bunch of favorites this month so it's probably going to be a relatively quick video but um, yeah I just wasn't, I don't know, I just didn't have a whole lot of new things to show and I wasn't going to just like make up things for the sake of the video so um, these are just a few things that have been my favorite for the month of May. So one of my first favorites has been gel nails again I kind of go into phases with doing like at home gel nails. Um, sometimes I'll like go a year without doing them and then I'll do it for like three months straight. Um, I just really love them so much especially like in the summertime just because I feel like um, I'm usually more active and like doing things and I feel like these are just so resistant for um, I guess against chipping and things like that. The one problem I do have sometimes is that these like gel nails will kind of like almost peel off in a little layer. So sometimes like if a little edge gets caught on something it'll peel off but then I have to just replace the nail. Um, but as far as like chipping these do not chip at all and sometimes if I'm really lucky I can get these to last about two weeks. Um, I do sometimes have to replace like a nail here or there but overall gel nails are just one of my favorite things ever. So yeah, I actually have a whole video dedicated to how I do my gel nails if you guys are interested in seeing that. The only thing I don't like about gel nail polishes is that they can be really expensive like when you first start up. So like you have to have the little like LED nail lamp and stuff. Um, you have to have like the base coat, the top coat, the actual nail polish color. But once you have all those things, um, it's super, super nice, and I feel like since they last so long, I feel like for me, it's definitely worth it. And I have a huge nail polish collection, but I only have a handful of gel polish colors just because they are a little bit more expensive. Sometimes I feel like they can range from um, usually about like, I don't know, eight to like $15 a polish. So yeah, I don't have as many as I would like, but some that I've been using, this is one from Kiss. I think this was more of uh, like on the less expensive side. And this one is called Sweet. This is the one I'm wearing right now. It's this really pretty kind of like teal um, kind of color. I just, it's so pretty. It's such a nice summer color. And then the next one I have, this is a brand I also like. Sometimes you can find these on sale at Ulta. This is Red Carpet Manicure. And this one is in the color Star Power. This one is so like neon pink. Um, I would say it's slightly more red tone pink than like what this outside bottle looks like, but it definitely glows under black light. Like it is so bright. So you might've seen me wearing that in my um, videos this month as well. But yeah, so gel polishes, I just can't get enough of them. I love them so, so much. And um, I'm kind of like back in the rotation of doing them again. So my next favorite, this one actually really surprised me. I've had this forever and I just did a video on this one as well. Um, this is from this Sem. It's the Semmel BB Cream. This is the A Clean BB Cream. Um, I also reviewed the two other ones in this collection and the primer as well. So I have a whole video dedicated to that as well. But this one actually really surprised me. Like I said, I've had this since December and I never really tried it until I wanted to make that review video. And um, this one is definitely my favorite out of the three that I've tried from the Sem. Um, it reminds me most similarly to the feeling and like the finish of the Elf Acne Fighting Foundation, which is one of my favorite ones. So inexpensive. This is a about like two or three bucks from Rose Rose Shop, so it's like extremely affordable. But I just like this one. It's like such a nice color tone for me. It feels nice on the skin, doesn't feel super heavy, um, and it wears relatively nicely. So this has been one I've been going to uh, like pretty much the whole month. The next product I got in my BoxyCharm, I was really excited to get this. This is the Pretty Vulgar Ink Gel Liners. This is usually, I think, $24, and of course the BoxyCharm box, um, mine is like $19.66, so it, this product alone was worth it. And the first time I tried it, I was really, really surprised because I have never found a gel eyeliner that I really liked as much as this one. I'm wearing it today. It looks really nice. I don't use it every single day, but if I have time that I'm like sitting down and really doing my makeup and like you know, taking my time. I do like to use this. But if I'm more on like the go or like really hurrying, I will use my um, Holy Grail liquid liner. And this is the Misha um, Natural Fix brush pen one. That one I just love so, so much. But I was really surprised that I liked this gel eyeliner as much as I did. Um, so yeah, I was really happy to get that in my BoxyCharm box. Another favorite that I got from my BoxyCharm box, I have been trying this a little bit more. So I haven't had this one quite as long um, as some of my other products, but I have been giving this a really good try 
eye for like the past like two weeks straight. This is the Cover FX Blurring Primer. I definitely like this, but only for a specific reason. So I only apply this kind of like to my nose area and just a little bit to my cheeks here, especially where I apply highlighter because I do kind of have some like enlarged pores there. Um, I definitely think that this does help kind of blur them a little bit. Now it doesn't like completely magically erase them or like hide them or anything, um, but I definitely was really liked this and this is like a $38 primer. So again, I'm so glad I got that in my BoxyCharm box um, because you know, honestly, I would not have like really bought this myself, but I'm really glad that I have it. However, I don't like using this all over my face. It is a much more dry kind of um, like mattifying kind of pore filler. So if you have oily skin, I think that this would be absolutely perfect for you. But since I have dry skin, it is just too dry to put all over my face. So I usually mix it with a more hydrating primer on different parts of my face, like my chin area, um, kind of like my jawline gets really dry and then a little bit around my forehead. I'll just use a different, more hydrating primer and then this one I just kind of use across the bridge of my nose and right under my cheek. I mean so as far as that um, I don't really have any other like super new products to show. I have been still loving my glitter shadows a lot like I mentioned in my last monthly favorites. I have just been going to those like non-stop. They're like one of my favorite things to apply. I feel like they make every look just look a little bit more special and fancy and it takes like literally no effort. So glitter shadows again are another repeat. And moving on to some non-beauty products um, that have been my favorites for the month. So I kind of took a little bit of a break on the K-dramas because I just watched like five shows back to back and I kind of needed a little bit of a break. So I still have a couple episodes left of Doctor Stranger, which was um, a really good one I mentioned in my last monthly favorite. So I still haven't even finished that one yet, which I'm surprised, but I will get around to doing that soon. But I really have been listening to a lot of podcasts lately and um and one thing I really really love is a lot of like crime and true crime and like forensic kind of things like I think I've seen like almost every episode of forensic files it's like my mom and I's favorite thing to watch all the time even if we've already seen the episode so if you're already like super interested in like crime and true crime podcasts then you've probably already heard of all these and listened to all these um I really love cereal that one I listened to um I think probably last summer so I listened to both of those seasons. I really like that. So those I loved and then kind of like a spin-off to that kind of by like the same people that did Serial. There was S-Town. That one I listened to in September. I think it came out last I think it came out last May or maybe last March. I don't know, but that one was so incredibly good. Like I talked about that one, I think um, forever ago as well. But the newest one that I listened to, which again, if you're already into like true crime, you've probably already heard this one, but it's called Up and Vanished. This one was very interesting because it was like production and quality wise, it reminds me like a lot, a lot like cereal. So if you like that kind of really professional sounding, um, like storytelling kind of feel to it, it definitely kind of will, um, like freak you out a little bit with like the music that they use. It's really kind of, it sets the mood. It follows the mysterious disappearance of a beauty queen school teacher in um, Georgia. So that one was a really interesting uh, podcast to listen to. It was extremely long though. Like I actually counted up or I kind of guesstimated about like how long, if you were to listen to like everything in that podcast because they do like the regular shows, they'll do like some Q and A episodes in between. They'll also do some case file episodes in between but I think overall it was about 36 hours of audio about it might be a little bit more a little less but it was a lot and I binge listened to that over like I think four or five days because it was just so so good and I think this one came out like in 2016 and so it's been going kind of ongoing um, ever since then I think the last like update they did was last November so it's kind of been a bit since um, they've like done any updates to the case or anything but I really liked it because it had the same vibe as Serial but with Serial season one what kind of like I don't know not disappointed me but left me wanting more was how like the case kind of like you know wasn't really getting solved or anything like nothing was really happening now, like now there has been updates since that podcast so you know there's going to be like a new trial for Adnan and things like that so that was really um, cool at how the podcast had such an impact on the actual case and similarly that's how it was with Up and Vanished so um, you know the case had gone cold for like 12 years and then um, this guy starts producing this podcast 
podcast and he starts talking about it and like going to Osceola, Georgia and like um, interviewing people and things. And because of the podcast, I think they actually might have like come close to solving the actual case that probably would have never gotten solved had it not been for that podcast. So it was really, really interesting to listen to. I still kind of feel like I want more, but it's kind of like, I guess, um, you know, happening in real time now. So there's like, not really as much to update at the moment, but it was just such an interesting case and really kind of eerie um, and a really good listen if you haven't already heard of it. I'm sure you, a lot of you have if you already like true crime podcasts. I have like a whole list of podcasts I wanna get into now, um, kind of like in the true crime genre, um, but if you have any that you think I just have to have to listen to, then definitely let me know. So I've already listened to Serial 1 and 2, I've already listened to S-Town, I listened to Up and Vanished. I hope Up and Vanished Season 2 comes out sometime soon, um, but I'll have to see. But then everything else I kind of, I don't think I've listened to. Um, but yeah, so if there's some that you think I just absolutely must listen to, let me know. Another favorite of mine, music-wise, um, BTS released their new album. I was so so excited. Um, I love all the songs so much and I bought the CD and I even got one of the 3D lenticular photo cards which I was dying when I got it. Like I was like screaming on the inside. I had just picked one of the random um, albums. I was like, oh, which one do I get? Which one do I get? And I just picked the first one I touched and when I got home and opened it, I was dying because I was so excited to get one of the lenticular um, 3D photo cards. I don't know how rare they are, but I was, I was so excited. And I'm gonna go see the concert in September. I'm so, so excited. So um, I have been loving their music and I completely forgot. Another favorite of mine this month has been my pink hair. So it's definitely like faded quite a bit. Um, I went swimming over Memorial Day weekend. So chlorine pool just totally wrecked my hair, that and being in the sun. Um, I don't know if you can actually see on camera, but like the actual tips of my hair have like gone blonde completely from the pool. <laughs> So I kind of have these like little sections of like blonde um, at the ends where like it, it does not match my hair anymore. <laughs> if I do that, you can probably kind of see the color difference. Um, yeah, chlorine just wrecked my hair color. I think I might um, let it fade just a little bit more, but I actually really like this like almost pinky champagne kind of color where it's like so slight you almost can't tell like is it pink is it just the lighting um which i really like i do like the hot pink as well but i'm i don't know i just don't like the attention that i think really bright unnatural hair colors bring and stuff so i always feel kind of self-conscious when i like go grocery shopping at like 10 p.m and stuff so um yeah i really like this kind of color more i think i might kind of try to maintain this kind of pink a little bit more but um, I have been really, really liking the pink. I think it's just so fun and I just love pink hair. So that is pretty much it for my favorites of May. Again, not many products, a lot more of just kind of like music and media and things like that. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please like and subscribe. You can follow me on Instagram. Link is below. And until my next video, I will talk to you guys later. Bye.